Yeah. Okay, good. Very good. Um, so for those of you who are campus students, you know that in lieu of Friday blends, uh, we have the campus experiences um, from portfolio and play dates and things like that. Um, those experiences you can find on the virtual calendar at wearemcbs.com. So I always want to start each lecture by presenting that to you so you know where to find all those things. Um, okay, I think we can go. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, the phases of web design. Before I start, though, I always like to ask if anybody came with a question because I want to make very sure that we answer those. Any questions whatsoever? Okay, everybody knows you can text me. That's how you reach me. Please don't call. I don't answer those. They're mostly spam. So text me and I will get back to you if you have any questions at all. Okay. All right, well, we'll go to the next one. So we're gonna do a quick overview. Where do websites come from? It's kind of a, it, it, there's not a real answer to them. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. Okay, they come from a need, right? You have clients, friends uh, who have a need for a site. Maybe it's a two page site that's just for, um, you know, an event and they're selling tickets or maybe it's a larger site. Can everybody see the slide that says need? Okay, well, yes. I recorded the whole thing and it stayed on one screen and I had to go in and edit it the other night and combine it with the audio. Anyway, it comes from a need. Okay, next. Uh, you won't be coding. Remember, you're not gonna have to learn that. It's helpful sometimes, especially if you're using Squarespace, but you won't need that. We'll go to the next one. So it's a need between the user and the business. Okay, you're gonna uh, be serving both of those parties when you're creating a website. This month, I will be your user. When I go to give you a grade, I'm going to give you video feedback of me going through Sometimes I've looked at your sites already, but really it's as a first time user, I'm going to go through and see how it's working, right? And then I'm going to, as I'm doing it, you're going to see, and you'll get that feedback about what, you know, may need to, to clean up. So the user is always important. That has a lot to do with, um, you know, how well it's functioning, things like that. And then you have the business's goals. Right, so those are the two things you're looking at, how you're going to please the client, how you're going to please the user. Sometimes the client doesn't know what you know, and they don't know that they can't use business jargon for other people, for you know, the user. And you have to educate them to help them know how to address the user. Okay, so you're kind of the middle person on that. Okay, next. So click it again and something. Okay, so there's the user's needs. And why are they going to a website? They're going to satisfy a goal, answer questions they have, or complete a task. There may be any other number of things that fall under this, but basically they're going there to find something. Occasionally they'll stumble upon something, but usually they're going to find an answer to something. Okay, next. So those were the user's needs, but the business has different needs, okay? They're trying to perhaps establish an online presence, promote their brand, or they're selling product, or they're educating and raising awareness for something. They're trying to build a community, capture more leads, okay? So they're trying to answer the user's questions all while doing these things, okay? Next, thank you. So as the designer, you're going to look for that sweet spot, right? You're going to look for that spot that serves both parties as well as you can. 
keeping it simple and easy to understand, right? Okay, so pleasing both parties. And web design is multidisciplinary, okay? It's going to include graphic design. You're going to have a lot of opportunity to lay out text and images this month, really important. If uh, information architecture, which is simply gonna be, you know, your navigation, how things are working, your hierarchy, things like that. Uh, the user experience, so UX, is definitely something you're going to be working with. Uh, marketing and uh, usability, which is a part of UX, and project management, right? You're going to be doing all this. You're used to project management at this point. You do that every month, every week for your projects. But it's especially important when you're working on a long-term project and a bigger site can become that. Thank you. So if you are in creative writing, MCBS, film, uh, we do have those programs in this course sometimes. Um, I need to clean that slide. If you're in any of those, then you have most of those multidisciplinary skills that you have are learning or have learned. Okay. So there's really no one in here who isn't equipped to make a decent website. Okay. Um, one of the things that I touched on in uh, Monday's lecture is to remind you that this isn't a class on Wix. I do recommend Wix and the assignments are geared towards that. The reason is um, they will hold your assignments or hold your content, your CSS, uh, for another year. So when you end up in web design, you still have your site to work from. Um, love screen, uh, Squarespace, but they won't hold your content for you. Um, you'll have to also continue to get the trial updated. Um, it only lasts two weeks. You can contact Squarespace support and they will gladly extend it for you. It's not a problem, but you do have to do that. But they won't hold on to it. I think it's probably server space, but they won't keep it. So this course is designed more with Wix in mind. Also in web design, we do have students who are in creative writing and in film, and they haven't had a web design course in their program. And Wix is easier for them to learn. But this isn't a course on Wix. It's design, layout, uh, usability, UX, those things. Wix is just a tool. Okay, so if you're mad at Wix, you know, shift over to something else if you have to, but I think this will be your best. And there are question marks all throughout the editor in Wix that click on that and it's going to give you, you know, ask anything and it's going to give you the answer. Super easy, it's right there. That's one thing that makes it user friendly. So where do websites come from? Well, they may well come from, at this point, family, friends, uh, people you run into um, who need a site, a small business. Um, there's so many things. A, a number of years ago, and, and people do this all the time, but I just remember this one. A student, uh, it was around this time, and there was a break. You guys are going to be on break next week, right? He had one or two, they had had one or two courses, uh, weeks in the course. And when they went back home, they created two websites. They'd never done that before, but they created two that they were paid for. So it's not difficult. You're going to be able to do it. And you should be thinking about adding it to your skill set so you can make some money on the side. Okay. Sometimes people will say, yeah, but if Wix is so easy, why would somebody pay me to do that? They could do it themselves. They possibly could do it themselves, but oftentimes they don't have time or they are not interested in doing it, or they know that design is not something they have spent time in and they don't like it, okay? So never underestimate your abilities or how needed they may be, okay? 
There's lots of reasons. And again, Wix is just a CMS. It's just a content management system. What you're bringing to the table is your design skills and your knowledge about how these things work for a user. Okay. And a lot of people won't know these things. Okay. All right. So that's where they come from. They come from a need that a business has, and you're going to feel that need. You're going to be able to. Okay. Next. So this is the process, the phases uh, that you will go through. There's the discovery phase, right? The inventory will be uh, for editing for the web. They are provided all of their elements, right? It's in a Google Doc. It has everything that they need because they're working on laying things out and so forth. Uh, for web design, of course, you are bringing in your own content, right? That's your inventory. Those are your assets. And you're going to be creating your asset guide for each work that you put in. Uh, in week three, editing for the web will also create something that has, uh, they take a break from the fictitious site that you're going to build, week one and two. Uh, and then you build your own professional site, just a skeleton, but you spend a week on that. And then you go back to your fictitious site and revise it, okay? Uh, based on the feedback that I give you uh, and peers. So the first part is you have your content, you start with that, you get that from your client. And when you are meeting with your client, hopefully you've already sent them a questionnaire so you can determine a lot of things before meeting with them, whether you need to or not. But one of the things you wanna ask them is the condition quality of their inventory. Are their assets quality resolution? You can spend a lot of time on really bad photos and trying to make them look good. And that needs to be worked into your uh, fee, okay? So there are little places where you could really lose time and money along the way if we're not thinking about those things. And that is one place. They also will say that they have the inventory, but you need to know exactly, if it's a small company, you need to know who exactly has that inventory. You know, they may say, well, we've got it somewhere. Uh, do you? You know, is it on somebody's drive? Did that person leave? Is half in one place and half in another? That has to be nailed down. You have to be able to assess the content. So that's going to be a part of your conversation with your client right away. You may need to photograph things for them. You know, you assess their work and say, you know, I can do a better job for you. How about I take some photos that are higher quality okay. or more up to date or reveal your new location, whatever it is. Um, but that is something to definitely think about is your inventory. Then you're going to do your research. Your competitor research is what we're talking about today. It's going to be one of your assignments. And you're simply going to look at those people in the particular industry that you are dealing with, your client's industry, and you're going to see what they're doing. You're going to be researching their competitors. In web design, you're going to be researching maybe a photographer, maybe a content creator, maybe your favorite uh, you know, director, whatever it is. That's what you're going to look at. You're going to find your favorite websites and you're going to find out what you like about them, what works, what doesn't work. That's your research. That doesn't mean there's not other things you will need to research that we're not even thinking of. Uh, it really depends on your client. You may have to research a little bit about their business, you know, but for sure you're going to do some competitor research, right? You're not going to want to accidentally choose colors that are the colors of their competitor, for example, right? They won't like that. So knowing that is helpful. You can even ask them, who are your biggest competitors? And how do you want to be different from them? Um, so you can have a questionnaire with your first meeting. Think through all the things that you think will help you help them. 
then you're going to create your proposal after you've done your research for the client. And um, web design doesn't create the full on proposal. They look at the elements, but I have them launching a week sooner than editing for the web. So um, they're just studying this part because a lot of the people in web design are creating for themselves their site, okay? So, and many of them will not go into web design. We have film degree uh, DCBS students. They're not necessarily interested in design uh, for designing a website. So um, they just need to understand the proposal. But if you are building something for a client, you can never forget the proposal. Those have to be included. Okay. And so you're doing that this week. You have your inventory, your competitor research you're working on, and then you're going to submit your proposal. Both of the courses, you have your first project due when you get back. And I think I gave you an even another day. So like the 13th is when your project is due. Please don't spend your whole holiday on this. I, you get breaks because you need them. And we want you to have those. So, you know, do look at it. Um, I know one of the web classes has it due before break, you know, and in a way that's great because then they don't have to think about that. It's done. But you do have that time because ordinarily I have your projects due on Monday. Okay. And there's lots of reasons for that, but uh, that's the situation. Also, if you are working on working ahead, then don't worry, you can contact me, you can text me, okay? Emails, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be working a lot still. We don't have breaks ourselves, just because you guys are out. But, you know, I'm definitely working, so you can send me a text if you have a question, if it helps. Um, and then after you have your proposal, uh, editing for the web is going to provide a video. And Marie, do you have your video still or your Real Deal Taco site? Uh, I believe so, I should. Yeah, if you can look for that, that really helps them. Um, and it helps you to go back and take a look and mentor them a little bit. Um, and that's one of the important reasons that I have you combined. Uh, it really helps both parties. Um, so let me know if you find that and we'll see if we can share that with the okay. group, okay, um, as I'm talking. So then you're going to design it and develop it after you do your proposal and you get it approved from your client, you're going to start and um, you'll put in your content. Uh, you'll make a mock-up, for example, perhaps just a skeleton that's kind of laid out before you go too deep into it, maybe. Um, and then you'll build it and deploy it. It's not unusual to have it, you know, one or two iterations. In Wix, you'll find that I have you uh, provide a Git feedback link. You can send that to a client and they can make comments directly on your site. That link is only good for two weeks. So you would have to update the link. It's very easy to do but you wanna make sure that you do. For me, it's important that you provide the get feedback link. This is recorded. I know nobody here is going to have a problem with this, um, but some people are busy and they may think it's not important. For those of you in web design, I can't grade your mobile if I can't see it. And in the get feedback link is the only way I can see it and, and look at it. Okay. I do also want you to send your published link because that doesn't disappear in two weeks. So if you see where you're, you need to submit a couple of links, that's why, that's the explanation for that. Editing for the web is not responsible for their mobile site okay. this month. When you get to web design, you will be. Um, it's not difficult. Those of you who are in uh, film or creative writing, don't be nervous about mobile because it's really, you're working in your desktop and it's creating it automatically in your mobile 
and you're just going to, when you're finished, uh, or as you're going, either way, uh, jump over from, you're gonna select the different, either desktop or uh, mobile in your editor, and you will see when you select mobile, you'll see your mobile layout. Usually what happens is the layout's kind of messed up and you have to just move things around. That's usually the extent of that. Maybe you need to remember to left align text. Maybe one thing that happens a lot, the about can be very long, your about section. Uh, once you get it to mobile, it seems like a lot of scrolling. So that often gets cut. Um, scrolling is something we want to reduce. Remember, scrolling and clicking. We don't want a lot of that. Okay, all right. So let's go to the next one, see what we have. Okay, your site research. Okay, that's coming up. It is one of your steps. We talked about that. All right. So we can go to the next, just, okay. Uh, one of the things you want to know right away, especially for web design, you'll do this week three in editing for the web, is your industry's tagline. The tagline is not a slogan. It's not, you know, bringing you the best video across the world. It, that is not a tagline. And if you look it up, you will see mixed uh, definitions. But here is what you want to do. A tagline is going to tell us exactly what you do. It's your service. And I know some of you in editing for the web are going to say, I don't know what my service is yet. There may be people in web design who say, you know, I'm not sure yet. And you're going to have an assignment in that in web design. Um, but really, if you're a videographer, then that's your tagline. If you're a content creator, that's your tagline. If you're a graphic designer, that's your tagline. So you would have your name or your logo and then what you do. Okay. And you would have that ideally on every page of your site because we don't know from which uh, page or onto which page our user is going to enter our site. And you always want them to know what you do. And we make it really clear. We don't hide it and bury it anywhere. When they hit your site, they're gonna see exactly what you do, if nothing else, okay? They can put the pieces together a little bit for some of the other things, but they need that information. Okay. So web design, you're going to be searching your industry leaders, those things, you know, the people that you really admire, those are gonna be your competitors that you're looking at, like we talked about. You're going to, here are the things you're going to analyze, the user interface. So remember there's UX and UI. UX is the user experience, that's everything. That's Apple's, you know, when you call in to the Genius Store, uh, Genius Bar, that's uh, the packaging that comes with it. That's the person you get on the phone, you know, reach on the phone when you call that company. Um, it's their support, it's how well the product lasts, it's the brand, are they nice, are they not nice? Um, that's the user experience, that's your experience. The UI, of course, is the user interface and the user interface can be anything. It can be your washing machine. It's got an interface that you're working with. You know, of course a website is a user interface, but user interfaces is just a part of the user experience, okay? The user experience is the big umbrella. But while you're creating a website, you're going to be thinking about the interface, right? How it's working, next. So here are some of the things you're going to ask yourself. Is the text easy to read? Contrast is so important. Um, too often we put a video, you know, on top of another video. So that's something, and, and you have an editing for the web and I will be putting it also to web design if it's not in there and I think it is. You have the 10 commandments of web design. Contrast is one of those. When it comes to aesthetics or readability, we choose readability. No matter how much we love that photo, okay? that's gonna come up a lot. You're going to have to make those choices. Okay. 
Is the website cluttered or unorganized? When you look at the competitors? Now this falls under aesthetics. Is the website enjoyable? Do you want to bounce as soon as you get there? Or is there something about it that's easy, you know? And that's a big deal. We want it to be super easy. That's why we stick with web standards. You know, having the contact page at the end. That's not where we get creative, right? Because we want the user to feel comfortable the minute they land on our site. And they are accustomed to finding things in certain places. So that's not the place to switch things up. Okay. You're going to look at the style. Uh, the font styles they're using. Remember, two fonts styles are really all you need. One for headers, one for body copy, and be consistent throughout with the size, color, etc. Um, you're going to see, did they do that? You know, is the font too small? Is it hard to read? Is the contrast there? You know, um, is their style coherent? cohesive? Do they carry their brand over, you know? So you'll look at the style of their interface. Next. Uh, again, the brand. And what's the overall tone? And uh, what some in web have already done is create a style guide. And a part of that is their tone that they include. And then for the web, week three is going to include a tone for their skeleton site, right? Is that tone, uh, you know, go with the brand? Is it what they're trying to say? And what are they saying with their tone? Um, is the brand recognizable? You know, is it memorable? Is it positive? Who's the target audience? That has a lot to do with why their site looks a certain way. So that's one of the biggest things is your target audience and knowing who they are. Is the logo prominent? Sometimes your logos have to be adjusted a little bit. And I know they're special to you. I know that. And I know you've put a lot into them and you love them. And sometimes they're really sentimental to you. So please do not be hurt if I mention something about the logo. If I mention it needs to be larger or cleaned up a little to see what it is, you know, maybe created an illustrator. Um, it's okay to just use your name in a font that you like. That can be your logo, that's fine. But I am going to look at it, okay? So please don't be hurt if I give you a suggestion about your logo, okay? Rarely do I count off for it, but it's super important for you, all right? Uh, the functionality, you're going to look at the scrolling, the sequence, and the menu. For example, if you're on a one page and you're scrolling, that uh, those sections, the sequence, needs to match the navigation sequence. Sometimes a student will, um, you know, have the about and then, let's say, works, their work, but as they scroll down, they have them reversed. So that can be a little disorienting. You're not likely to run across that on your uh, competitor site. It's just sort of a, a newbie thing that people do. Um, make sure that does their navigation anchor to the proper content? When you click something, does it take you there? When we create the contact page, we are telling our user when they click there, that's what they're going to receive. That's why it's good to have it above the scroll rather than a beautiful photo that they have to scroll down and find the contact that they're looking for. They get a little nervous, like, am I on the right page? Because I thought I was going to have the contact, but here's this beautiful photo. If they're looking for the contact, the beautiful photo isn't important to them. Uh, all the links, do all the links work and go where you think they're supposed to, right? Do they take you away from their site? 
or are they opening up in a new tab? That's super important. And remember, I'm your user. I really want you to open everything in a new tab. I really, really do. Otherwise, you know, I am five pages down into your website and now I have to click back to go back to give you a grade on FSO. I do right click, but I shouldn't have to and your user certainly shouldn't have to. You don't wanna send people away to YouTube, right? That's a black hole of time for all of us. I mean, you're competing with curated material especially for that person. What are the chances they're gonna come back to your site once they're on YouTube, okay? So a lot of you are gonna put videos on, embed those videos, okay? And when you have a YouTube social icon, make sure it opens in a new window, okay? All right, next. Uh, again, with functionality, uh, is it easy to find? And we'll look more into that in search engine optimization later. Um, was it easy for them to find their content? Uh, is it navigable? Is it uh, intuitive? Can a user go to your site and just basically know how to do it? We wanna make it really easy. We don't want them to have to think. That's not the place for them to think, okay? We want it so easy. Uh, do the pages refresh quickly? What that means, especially when you're creating your works page, um, have you optimized your work to where it's not such a large file that it's taking a very long time to refresh? Now, it will refresh for you because you've already got it in your cache. So when you open up your site, it may not do what it's going to do for someone else or for me because you've already got that image loaded. But for me, it may take a really long time. And that's just enough to make somebody bounce. Okay. All right. And again, are all the links working as expected? We're good. Keywords, we'll go into that. Uh, week three for sure in web design, you're going to go through and test all of your keywords to find out what is the best word. And it's super easy. It's a super easy assignment. It's the Google Trends. Please don't skip it. You know, it's my heart breaks because it's such an easy one and it's so valuable, which is why I have it there. Um, but it's one of those five points that some people say, oh, I'm not going to do it. Super important. Um, are, the, are important keywords easy to identify? Does it serve its purpose and answer the user's questions? Think about what your target audience wants to know about you. We don't need on our works page, we don't need 30 photos, okay? In the assignment where you are required to create an asset guide for a few works, you're only required to put three to six works for a reason. We want your very best quality. We aren't interested in quantity because the user is not interested in quantity. They only want to see your best work, what you can do. They don't want to scroll and scroll and look at your work. I'm sorry to say. Um, sometimes there is a trade-off. If there's a real payoff, somebody will do that. You know, if it just gets better and better and better and better and it's unique, they may scroll. Um, here's, I mean, there's one site I know of that has probably a hundred and I, I scroll on it. Um, it's called the windows of New York in case anybody wants to look at that. Um, but here's another thing about the works that you collect. Uh, you're going to be doing this in web design right away. If you're a photographer, um, understand that if you have images that are photographed in the same setting with the same lighting, the same individuals, or landscape with a just the slightest, you know, uh, change of camera or something. Those are duplicates. I know they don't look identical to you because you see the very uniqueness of each photo, right? But to a user who's coming to your page to check things out, those are duplicates. So let's not have a lot of images 
that are kind of the same, you know, it may be a picture of a pizza. One is from, you know, a bird's eye view and one is straight on, but if it's the same pizza, the same lighting, all of that, that's a duplicate. Okay, so be choosy. Okay. Okay, web standards. You'll hear me say things about web standards throughout the month. I'll say, um, this will improve your web standards understanding of these. This will, um, this isn't, you know, working with what we know to be the best um, standards for web. Um, so are they being observed? Something like, is the contact page at the end? Is the home page at the very beginning? Most people naturally do that because their templates are going to do that, but some people, you know, want to shake it up. And that's not a web standard. People don't know where to find things if we move things around a lot. Reduce scrolling and clicking. And is the content there as promised? Um, the thing about clicking, remember, we don't want to say click here because just as a reminder, because for a screen reader or for SEO, search engines aren't going to find it and know what it is. They're not searching click here. Nobody's searching click here, click here. But the screen readers for those people with low vision is going to say click here, click here, click here, click here. And they don't know if they want to click there. You know, I'm afraid to click on things. <laughs> so you want to tell them exactly what's going to happen when they click on it. That's a good way to place to put a keyword because uh, Google will search through links and they'll search through um, your content links. Okay. All right. So then you're going to look at the content itself. Um, you're going to make sure that you have your copyright updated at the bottom of your template. I recommend you not have your phone number on your website, okay, that you just have your email and if you want to then provide your number, do that. Um, you're going to check your the spelling and grammar of both your site and you're going to check it on your competitor site when you're working. Um, and product examples. You know, people want to see what it is. Uh, if it's a, you know, let's say the taco food truck, they probably want to see tacos. Okay. Uh, again, for those of you in editing for the web who are listening to this, when you use images, and this will be the case for those in the Google Doc, remember it's a food truck. So there will be no images of interior restaurants. And there'll be no images of glassware. You'll find beautiful shots, wonderful food, but if it's on a glass plate, that doesn't really say food truck, okay? Because they're not probably serving glass, unless you guys know of one who does. So I don't know this country. Okay, maybe in other countries they do. Okay, thank you. We can go to the next one, I think. Um. Okay. When you have videos in a gallery or you have graphic design work that you put in a gallery, the thumbnail is really important. If it's a video, that image, that front image is super important. If you've taken um, a video and you have a picture of a person screaming, it's natural for people not to want to click on that. Okay, so be careful of that first image. If it has uh, lettering, especially for graphic design, make sure that the thumbnail doesn't crop the lettering. The thumbnail has to be considered, okay? Oftentimes people will just put it in there and they're thinking, well, they're gonna click on it and see the whole thing. Well, they may not click on it. They're more likely to click on it if there's enough padding around the text, there's margin and they can read it, they see it. Um, it's gonna make your work look so much better. Um, making sure things aren't cropped out, heads aren't cropped out. And be careful about parallel scrolling. If you choose a template that does that, 
it's really hard to get a great image that works and drops back enough. And you don't, if it's people, you don't want it to start here at the shoulder. You want it to, once they are finished scrolling all the way through, the eye should be the last thing that they see moving away from the page. It's not always, uh, it doesn't always buy you anything as far as choosing the parallax. So don't feel compelled to use it. Um, something that has a photo that has that drops back completely and maybe has a one point perspective that's very deep that sometimes can work but too often the image that is scrolling in front and in back is um, competing and usually you know it's the front image you want to see but if we're you know uh, looking at the back one too that's that you don't want um quality Focus, lighting, anybody in web design by now, you've had, uh, you know, video classes, uh, certainly digital cinematography has had a lot of video uh, exercises. The lighting should be good. There is no one in this class, um, editing for the web maybe, but not if you try. Uh, nobody in web design, should have images or video that's out of focus or has poor lighting on their site, okay? All right, um, you'll have profile photos. You can, if you don't have one already, you can easily take your cell phone and walk around your dwelling and look for lights coming in and just move until you get the right look. All right, just go through and find the, the sweet spot of the lighting and take a, you've got great quality with your cell phone. You don't have to even pull out your camera, okay? 